Hello everyone, today we are going to give you a little bit updated information about coronavirus. Now, we have published a recent video uh, which attracted a lot of attention and we had a lot of comments and questions about personal risk when you have coronavirus. Um, again, uh, we are going to go into a little bit more detail today about your personal risk about coronavirus and what you should really do in this, uh, in this uh, time uh, uh, with the coronavirus going on. Now, especially patients with diabetes, chronic health conditions have been at a high alert and they are really concerned in terms of what happens uh, if they have uh, coronavirus. Now, I am Dr. Ergin. I'm the founder of SugarMDs.com. We are, we are a virtual uh, health company. We uh, deal with diabetes remotely. Uh, so if you have diabetes, high blood pressure, cholesterol, chronic health conditions, uh, definitely we will be able to help you uh, in this time uh, when uh, nobody wants to really go anywhere, uh, especially to doctor's offices where there may be a lot of sick people clustering. So keep that in mind. Now we are going to go into detail right now what really happens if you have coronavirus. Now there has been a lot of panic. People are really scared and in my previous video I said that the death rate is higher and if you have diabetes your chances of death from coronavirus is higher. Uh, now that I didn't mean that you actually will die from coronavirus. That's why in this video we are going to explain what exactly I meant and what you can do to prevent and treat coronavirus and what is the real risk. Now, uh, let's go into a little bit of a stats. What's the real numbers? Because you have been watching TV probably, you have been hearing things from a lot of resources and you're probably confused in terms of what is your own real risk. Now, number one, uh, let's talk about exactly what happens if you have coronavirus. Statistically speaking, guys, 80% have mild disease. What is mild disease? Like, like common cold type of symptoms, uh, you know, low grade fever, uh, some cough, and, and stuff like that. So that, if you have that, uh, you know, you, sh you can be tested. People are asking, can I be tested? Should I isolate myself? I mean, if your symptoms are not, not really that bad, if your fever is not more than 100.4, uh, and if you are not having a severe uh, shortness of breath and so forth, uh, you know, there's a common sense to isolate yourself, even if without coronavirus. You don't want to go spread your flu. Uh, even a regular flu, uh, you should be isolated yourself right but if you want to get tested uh, you know you may if you're lucky you may get tested but they generally right now give priority to people who have traveled people are, people are who are high risk for coronavirus COVID-19 so um, if you have mild symptoms you know don't waste your time stay home try to prevent uh, spreading the virus in case it is coronavirus, uh, stay home. So uh, if your symptoms get worse, you start developing fever uh, about 100.4, uh, you, your symptoms start turning into pneumonia, like a severe shortness of breath, productive cough, and so forth, definitely uh, go to ER, get tested. Uh, it, there's a chance that you may end up uh, staying in the hospital as well if your symptoms are severe enough. Uh, even if, if your symptoms are not severe enough, even if you test uh, positive, for corona, corona, positive for coronavirus, doctors may send you home anyways uh, for uh, self-quarantine um, so that you don't spread the virus. Now, 15% uh, will develop severe disease. Now, what is severe disease? Severe disease basically means pneumonia. Uh, so elderly people tend to develop pneumonia more than younger people, uh, and people with chronic health conditions tend to develop pneumonia uh, because pneumonia is more of a uh, severe reaction. Your body cannot combat the virus. Uh, as a result, sometimes, you know, that virus will travel all the way to lungs, and that happens in 15% of uh, patients. Now, that 15% of patients who get the coronavirus uh, do not necessarily end up in the ICU. Uh, so uh, we call that critical disease. So the 5% of people who have coronavirus will end up in, uh, in intensive care unit. Uh, and overall mortality rate, which is the death rate, okay, just keep that in mind, is 2.3%. That is overall across the board. Doesn't mean that that's your own risk. So what determines your own risk depends on multiple factors. So as a result, Nobody can give themselves a score. Oh, okay, my chance of dying is 10% or his, yours is 15%, but mine is 0.1%. Uh, you cannot do that. So even if healthy young individuals can develop severe disease, so again, avoiding is the most important thing. 
you know, again, risk, understanding the risk is the most important thing. A lot of people have trouble understanding the risk. Uh, what does this risk mean? How many things contribute to the risk? So as a result, don't try to go crazy about it. Don't try to do, take crazy measures, except the, the recommended measures, such as, uh, you know, social uh, distancing and so forth. But don't try to go buy uh, immune enhancers on the internet and a bunch of vitamins. And, you know, this is a time where a lot of opportunistic people uh, try to sell you stuff. And uh, don't go anything that is not recommended by CDC, uh, that's not proven by clinical studies. Uh, so do not do a panic reaction when it comes to that. And we'll talk about what can be taken more conservatively to boost your immune system in a second. Uh, but again, there are a lot of commercial websites right now, uh, email scams and so forth. Try to avoid that, okay? Uh, please. Now, uh, in terms of the, the death rate, again, the, the elderly people are at more risk. So uh, between 70 and 80 years of age, the risk of death is up to 8%. Remember, we said 2.5% is the general risk uh, for across the board. But if you are 70 to 80 years of age, your risk is going to be up to 8%. Now, above 80, that risk goes to 15%. So if you are watching this video, more than likely you are less than 80. But if you are more than 80, you should be really, really concerned if you have symptoms. Uh, and you should definitely uh, go to the doctor, get checked, especially if you're above 80. If you have chronic health conditions such as diabetes, you definitely you need to go to hospital. The initial advice that I was giving that if you have mild symptoms, like common cold, mild common cold, that applies to younger people. But if, if you are more than 80, more than likely the disease can develop very fast and can progress to your lungs and can put you in a critical condition. So as a result, for people uh, who are above 80, or if you have people uh, in your family who is above 80, you know, sometimes, uh, you know, as, as we all know, sometimes, you know, they can be stubborn. They may say, oh, nothing will happen to me and so forth. So please try to convince them if you're running a fever, if they're having shortness of breath, that's not a time to avoid to avoid going to the, the doctor. Uh, if you have a stable diabetes uh, or, you know, if you have no signs of virus, of course, don't go to the doctor for a back pain or something. That's not a good time for that. Um, so as a result, you know, for, for people with diabetes, our virtual health company really helps with that because we can handle pretty much everything online uh, with the cell phone. Uh, anything you do in a clinical practice, in a physical practice, we practically do everything and more actually with our SugarMD's platform. Uh, now let's talk about the, um, the, the vitamins that can actually may help and there's no uh, clear-cut evidence that these things can help but I will just tell you uh, what micronutrients your immune system needs overall not just for coronavirus okay so the vitamins that are a c d and e okay a c d and e vitamins are important b2 b12 b6 uh, vitamins folic acid beta carotene and zinc are important things for your immune system. Now, if you have a healthy overall diet, if you're eating salads, you know, green vegetables, uh, overall uh, healthy options, your body should get all those vitamins and minerals. Uh, but if you overall have a poor diet, uh, you're a fast food eater and so forth, you may be deficient. Uh, so as a result, you know, if you have vitamins at home, you can you can take some extra vitamins that hopefully can help. But again, I'm not trying to claim here that if you take vitamin C or E or D, then you will be immune to coronavirus. That is not true. And if they are trying to sell you these immune boosters, again, stay away from them. There is no clear evidence. So overall healthy um, diet will help. Now, of course, when your body is stressed out due to chronic health conditions, your immune system will be down. So those who have diabetes, who are older with chronic health conditions have to be more alert about the problem and that sleep is one more important thing, guys. So if you are sleep deprived, that's a good time for those people who stay home. Stay home, have a good sleep, um, avoid uh, the contact. Uh, so um, exercise is another good thing. So you don't have to really avoid exercise. Uh, you can go out, jog, run, whatever helps 
to your body to stay healthy. So overall, healthy body it means a good healthy immune system. The reason older people tend to develop severe disease is just like anything in our body. Uh, it, it it gets older, so our immune system gets older as well. Like a like a like a newborn, uh, which just I had one the two days ago. Um, uh, they have very fragile immune system. They are open to immune open to any infection, right? So you baby them, you make sure that you take care of them and you avoid any contact, especially from sick people because their immune system is just developing. And then their immune system is best, you know, when in your 20s and 30s, uh, and then it starts going down after 50s, and then by 65, 70, your immune system is really old, getting old. As a result, the response to uh, the pathogens is not as great. Uh, that's why older people tend to develop pneumonia or criti critical illness uh, more easily than the younger people. So the bottom line, if you have diabetes, if you have other health conditions, um, don't freak out. Uh, take necessary measures that we discussed in our previous video in terms of avoiding and preventing the disease. Uh, if you are older, 65 and above, uh, again, be extremely careful. Try not to go to restaurants. Try not to go where people aggregate uh, where you can have uh, uh, infection. You can, you can contract the infection. Again, at least six feet away from other people. Uh, even if you think they're healthy, you know, do not try to uh, show off, be brave, and try to hug and kiss people. Don't do that, even if they do not have symptoms. It is okay to do elbow. It is uh, it is okay. Now everybody is going to accept that. Nobody is going to upset about that, right? And for elderly people, uh, 65 and above, again, you know, make sure that you um, are you know paying attention to these measures. And if you have diabetes and chronic health conditions, stay in touch with your doctor because if you have coronavirus, again, you should take care of it. Uh, most of the time it's supportive measures. There is no miracle treatment. They're working on it. They're working on the vaccine. They're working on some antivirals are being tried. Uh, however, right now we do not really have a, a cure. Uh, they're all is supportive. That's why they're talking about ICU beds. They're talking about ventilators if needed, since this developed tend to uh, happen to older people uh, uh, and they put them in a critical condition. Uh, so. Again, I hope uh, that video helps. I hope that eases your anxiety about the coronavirus, uh, provided that you take necessary measures uh, and do not take extreme measures. Uh, and please let us know if you have any questions. Again, I'm Dr. Ahmed Ergin, uh, founder of SugarMDs.com. We are, a, we are a, a virtual diabetes health company. And I hope you have a great day.